Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's NTOP Live. We're going to be talking about topology optimization inside of NTOP, but specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the difference between a what I'm going to call a traditional topology optimization uh, and a topology optimization with our stress constraint, right? Uh, we're going to be talking about you know, how you use it, why, when, the benefits, maybe any potential drawbacks. We're going to be discussing the stress constraint uh, in NTOP today. So, Let's kind of take a look at our problem statement or our just our general problem. We have our initially imported geometry here. We have this nice bracket. This is used to hold a UAV engine in place, uh, partners with Cobra Arrow here. And what we're doing is running it through a topology optimization process, obviously reduce the mass, uh, but keep it as strong as possible. And a traditional topology optimization, I wanna say solution or the traditional goal here is to maximize the stiffness and minimize the mass, right? And that's what we would normally do. And in this case, I did that as well, right? But let's back up just a quick second to create a topology optimization process, right? We have to take our part, we have to turn it into a mesh, right? Create that, create that discretization. We have to apply some forces. We have to apply some fixed faces. So you can see I have a force, I have a moment, I have these faces fixed down here at the bottom where they mount to our geometry. So. We have to set up our problem with all those boundary conditions with the mesh. Uh, and if we set up a traditional topology optimization, right, we have two load cases, structural compliance, and we're minimizing it. Therefore, we are maximizing the stiffness, maximize stiffness, and minimize the mass by you know, reducing it by a specific amount. We will end up with a result that looks something like this. Now, you notice, not symmetric. It's not symmetrically loaded, so uh, we didn't apply a symmetry constraint. But at the end of it, right, we get this result here. And if we, we take our raw result, just like any topology optimization process, we need to post-process it, do some smoothing, add some geometry back, do all of that wonderful stuff. NTOP is fantastic at it. I've talked about in a previous NTOP Live why I use N-topologies, topology optimization. If you haven't seen that, go watch that one. I kind of dive into this uh, a little bit deeper. But we do all of this post-processing here, right? Maximize stiffness, minimize mass. That was our goal. And we're going to take this, the, the final result here, turn it into mesh and run a validation simulation on it. And uh, what, I, what I didn't mention quite yet is this is printed out of aluminum, right? So it has, you know, let's say ballpark 275 megapascals is its yield, right? We definitely don't want to hit that. And if we take a look over here at my maximum von Mises, we're sitting at about 606 megapascals, right? So that is way, 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 way too high. But why is that? And actually, I can show you right here in this corner, we have a massive stress concentration happening. Now, because our goal is to maximize stiffness and minimize mass, right? The optimization is not checking stress. It's simply computing a stiffness matrix, which is not going to account for this sort of stress concentration here. So that's something we could fix manually, right? We can get rid of that. Or we can do all of the same steps. We can do all of the same steps. We set up our mesh, set up our boundary conditions. And this time we run a optimization, but this time instead of just a volume fraction constraint, we're gonna include a stress constraint. So this is just a block inside of NTOP. Two total inputs you need to give it, a stress limit and a load case, right? So in this case, we're uh, limiting it based off of this force. This is our dominant load case here. And uh, our, our stress limit is about 200 megapascals. Now, I'm going to run it through the process, and it's going to look something like this, which is similar, similar, but once I go through all of the same post-processing steps, and let me pull those open here for you, once I go through these post-processing steps, you'll notice this area here where we had that big stress concentration looking a little bit better. And if we take a look at its validation here as well, we'll notice we're down to 268 megapascals. So in this case, this stress constraint here took that stress concentration we're having, and because it was checking stress now, checking it uh, very specifically, it avoided that very large stress concentration, right? So it actually redistributed material here to avoid that specific issue. And that is one reason and why the stress constraint can be so helpful inside of a topology optimization process. Now, let's talk about a couple things. I'm gonna talk about uh, you know pros and cons here a little bit. One thing, I said 268 megapascals was our max, but that goal was 200. Well, what's happening is now this interface region, uh, I have a 90 degree corner here, infinitely sharp 90 degree corner. 
which is causing me some issue on each of my pieces here. So realistically, uh, the way to fix that, go add in a fillet and rerun the simulation, right? That would solve that up for us. Um, so that's that's what we could do to fix there. But I want to talk about this stress constraint and kind of how it works on the back end, right? We kind of looked at one versus the other, you know, just stiffness versus stiffness with the stress constraint. Now, what's the difference behind the scenes? So if we look at the actual optimization blocks or the topology optimization blocks themselves, they are set up near identical, right? The goal is the same. The load cases are the same on both of them. The only difference is down here in the constraint, the stress constraint. Right, that is the only difference between these two optimizations. Now, what this is doing behind the scenes, behind the scenes, if we didn't have the stress constraint, we're just checking uh, the stiffness. So the optimization is computing what we call a stiffness matrix. Now, when you use the stress constraint, uh, our goal is still to maximize the stiffness. So it's still gonna be computing that stiffness matrix, but it's now also gonna be computing that stress matrix, right? And that stress, the, <laughs> That stress matrix takes a lot longer to compute than the stiffness matrix. So when you use the stress constraint, it can be extremely helpful and extremely beneficial to the process. However, it's going to make your optimization take longer to process and take longer to convert. So keep it in mind, once you add in this stress constraint here, your calculation time is going to go up pretty significantly. But uh, that can be a very good thing and something we can certainly live with along the way. So that's just one thing to keep in mind that it does increase that computation time. Now, uh, this this example that we're looking at here, this is the Cobra arrow bracket, and this is the actual boundary conditions given uh, by Cobra arrow here. So this is optimized according to the actual conditions it's going to be going in. I actually created another version here. It is the exact same file, but what I did was I changed up the um, boundary conditions here. So I have slightly different boundary conditions in this file here. And I, I have this one labeled uh, EBC for Evan boundary conditions, right? Uh, and what I want to look at is the outcome of the optimization here. So the just maximizing stiffness version here. So this is our, our stiffness version here, right? You can see, you can take a look at this. And our maximum value of stress here is 246 megapascal. So not that bad not that bad at all but i want to compare it against the one where we have the stress constraint so with the stress constraint we go from this to this and what you'll notice our maximum stress now is exactly 200 megapascals and what this one did instead of going and finding a stress concentration right we didn't really have any bad stress concentrations in this part except for down here in our corner which it can't fix uh, what it did was it reorganized the part, essentially, it distributed the stress in this part better. So there's a lot more greens and yellows in here. It's better distributed, but the maximum value has decreased pretty significantly. So now with 200 megapascals, we've hit our goal. We have a good factor of safety uh, and we're happy and we can move on. So the stress constraint works in this sort of a way. In one instance, we saw it, there was a big stress concentration and it got rid of that for us. In this other one, there wasn't a big stress concentration, but because it was checking stress through the optimization process, it distributed the material to distribute the, the stress a little bit better. So it lowered the maximum, uh, it distributed the stress better, and it gave us a very good end result. This is why the stress constraint uh, is a very useful constraint to use in your topology optimization process. Now, in everything I showed you today, I had a single stress constraint, but I do want to go ahead and here and point out, we have two loading cases. So if I wanted to add in a secondary stress constraint, we can certainly do that. But keep in mind, again, uh, we can have as many constraints as we want, but the more constraints, the more things you add into the optimization, right, the longer that computation time. So keep that in mind. But if you have multiple that you need to keep in mind with uh, specific values and things like that, you can certainly take that into account. So. This is what I wanted to talk about for the stress constraint, a good introduction with a good couple of examples here with some nice, interesting geometry and some good outcomes. Uh, I hope you start to make use of this constraint. I think it's a very useful one, one that uh, should be used more often than it is, in my opinion. But please let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and thank you for joining me and listening to this NTOP Live.